Well, just last week I was in Detroit for the North American International Auto Show and on the very first day they announced the North American car, truck and SUV of the year. And this one, the new Lincoln Navigator, the truck of the year. And why? Well, there's a whole lot of advancements going into full-size luxury body-on-frame SUVs from Ford and Lincoln. They hope are going to lure people away from the General Motors products. Now, if you follow the marketplace, you know Cadillac has such a massive lead when it comes to sales against the Navigator and when you go down market into the mainline vehicles like the Suburban and the Tahoe, they outsell the Ford products. So what they decided to do was build a brand new full size body on frame truck that would compete and they hope lure people away from those products. It's built on the F-150 platform and all of the metal that you see that's paintable on the outside is aluminum just like the Ford product. You get unique headlights in the front that have five lenses inside there that basically widen or narrow depending on the situation. Under 56 kilometers an hour at their widest projection to illuminate as much of the road as possible. And when you're on the highway, they narrow up to shoot down the road. Also the grill in the center there, you see the Lincoln Star, which on the top model actually illuminates at night. So you're gonna be able to notice that when you see them on the road. The one you see here has optional 22 inch wheels. Now sizes, much like the Ford Expedition, they have a shorter wheelbase version and a longer wheelbase version. There's basically only two trim levels in Canada, but inside each trim level, there's a short wheelbase and a long wheelbase. We're on our way up to Whistler. We're actually in Porto Cove. We're gonna drive, tell you more about this new Navigator, the new truck of the year. Now, as I mentioned, this is different than the Expedition. Let's talk about the similarities and then how it differs when you get the Navigator. So it's based, both trucks are based on the F-150 chassis, body on frame design, aluminum, as I mentioned, on the outside to help reduce weight, but they've added in a whole lot more content. So with the Expedition, you get a passive shock and spring. Now granted, it's independent suspension in the rear, which is a major differentiator with the General Motors truck. So you get that in the Expedition and you get that in the Navigator. But when you get the Navigator, you get the adaptive suspension as standard equipment, where it's only available on that Expedition on the very top trim. So that's a differentiator, adaptive suspension on all models. You also get drive modes here. It starts, I like, with Excite, I guess that's sport mode. Then you get conserve, that's the fuel economy mode, the normal default setting. You get normal for uh, four by four, and then you get slippery, that's for slick icy roads. And then you get uh, deep conditions, that would be for snow or mud. So depending on where you live in the world, it might be in the Middle East, a truck like this would be good for sand. But here in Canada, it's going to be, of course, for winter driving conditions. We get standard 4x4 on all of the Navigator models in Canada. Towing capacity is 8,200 pounds with this product. So here's another differentiator between this and the Expedition. Both have the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 engine that has been used now for many years in the Ford truck range, but this gets a substantial output boost. The top trim in the Expedition is capable of 400 horsepower. This truck gets 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. So obviously what they're doing is they're adjusting the amount of boost and the intake manifold to get more out of this 3.5 liter V6, which does need that premium gas in order to get the 450 horsepower. Now, both trucks also come with a 10-speed automatic transmission, but as I mentioned, with the different drive modes, it adjusts the shift parameters to get whatever you're trying to accomplish, either more performance or better fuel economy. So how does it all come together? Well, I gotta tell you, it's surprisingly nimble on its feet. Even though this is a big, heavy truck, it handles quite well. I like it in the Excite mode the best. I think the three and a half liter V6 engine is more than capable and it just feels much smaller than it actually is. And this is a great road on the way to Whistler to test a vehicle like this because this is pretty much exactly what a truck like this will be used for. Driving kids around to activities and school during the week and then taking off and going skiing up to your cottage or chalet on the weekend. And it's absolutely at home. Yes, it's top heavy, it sits high in the saddle, but considering all of that, it's surprisingly good.
Now, one of the criticisms we've had of Lincoln over the last few years with new products they've brought out, like the Continental, is when you get on the inside, they really just look like warmed over and updated Ford products. With this Navigator, you can certainly see a difference between this and the Expedition. So the goal was to emulate yachts and private jets on the inside, and I think for the most part, mission accomplished. This is a very opulent interior. It looks like it's expensive, and it has lots of nice touches. I think the most noticeable thing when you get in is the floating 10-inch SYNC 3 system. It is similar to the Ford system, but this looks so much different. It sits there with black around it, chrome. There's chrome around the center console and all the switch gear. You still have the push button gear selector in the center there. Push button or not, that's for you to decide whether you like it, but at least it's done in a very cohesive way. There seems to be kind of a floating theme here. That 10 inch sort of tablet is floating in front of the dashboard. The center console I have here is floating over the floor. You have lots of space underneath there to store things. Women will like to put their purse there, very well thought out. In the center of the console, there's a wireless charger for your phone, big cup holders. You can lift up here and there's a massive center console underneath for storing extra items as well. In the second row, there's three options. On the base model, you can get the captain's chairs or the bench seat, and there's no price difference. You just have to decide whether you want to take extra passengers or not. What you get, though, is when you go to this reserve, if you get the captain's chairs, you do get the large center console. It, too, is floating above the floor. You'll see it juts out there. There's storage underneath. In behind the steering wheel, there's a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, which is configurable. What is above that though, is an equally large heads up display. I said it when I was driving the Continental and I'll say it again with this product, it is the best heads up display in the business. It's super bright, even wearing polarized sunglasses, you can see it. And it's the same size as the instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. So a lot of real estate to project different things onto the heads up display. Lincoln pointed out today that the very last row, the third row, the seats don't sit right on the floor. They sit up a little bit higher so that your legs aren't up around your ears, giving you a little bit more space. The seats are 24-way adjustable on the base model and 30-way adjustable on the front if you get the reserve, the one that I'm driving here. Plus, these are also massage seats. So if that floats your boat, try that out as well. So this Lincoln Navigator is a luxury product with a luxury price tag. It starts at basically $88,000 for the short wheelbase version. If you want the long wheelbase version with the base select trim, it goes up to around $91,000. Then you get into the reserve. It starts at $91,000 and goes to ninety-three dollars if you want the long wheelbase version. So this is an expensive product. But when you compare it to Cadillac, it's very competitive and it's a very different product from the Escalade. Independent rear suspension, drive modes that actually make quite a difference where with the Cadillac, the suspension is kind of stiff. It's got a luxury interior with all kinds of different features depending on which seat you're in. I found it very comfortable. I really was impressed when I drove the Ford Expedition. This Navigator just takes it to a whole different level. If you want to save some money and get a similar experience, the Ford product might be the way to go. But if if you're all about luxury, the Navigator doesn't disappoint.